Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and colleagues, I'm delighted to welcome you to this honorary degree ceremony at the University of Bath. It is my most pleasing duty to commend Professor Scott Barrett, who will be accepting the honorary degree of Doctor of Laws today in recognition of his distinction and leadership in the field of international, environmental, economics and politics. An honorary degree is the highest accolade the university can bestow. In celebrating the 50th anniversary of the granting of the Royal Charter by Her Majesty the Queen this year, we will be recognising over 60 remarkable men and women in this way. Many of these honorary degrees will be conferred during our summer and winter degree ceremonies, as is customary. But 27 will be conferred at celebratory events such as this over the course of the next year. In conducting research, universities have an imperative to address real world problems. Within our Institute for Policy Research, we are looking at the changes required in the behaviour of individuals, groups, organisations and systems in order to address environmental, social and economic challenges. Indeed, six of our research teams have been successful in securing EPSRC Global Challenges funding to look at issues in the developing world, such as clean water and sanitation, living conditions in refugee camps, access to essential medicines and vaccines, climate change impact and sustainable energy. Through our GW4 partnership, we are collaborating with the universities of Bristol, Cardiff and Exeter to, to tackle these key global challenges. As we will hear from the University Orator shortly, Professor Barrett is leading the way in terms of scholarship on transnational and global challenges. Challenges which range from disease to climate change. He has a particular interest in the part that global cooperation can play in addressing these challenges. We are delighted that he is able to join us and look forward to hearing his insights during the lecture this evening. So, without further ado, we will start the formal ceremony. And by my authority as Vice-Chancellor, I declare this congregation open for the conferment of honorary degrees. And I call upon the University Orator to present the candidate for the degree Honoris Causa. Vice Chancellor. It is my pleasure to introduce Professor Scott Barrett, who has made important contributions to the understanding of international cooperation particularly related to the environment. Born in Boston, Scott received a BS summa cum laude from the University of Massachusetts, Amherst in 1979, MA from the University of British Columbia in 1983, and a PhD from the London School of Economics in 1989. He held appointments at the London Business School from 1988 to 1990, and at the Johns Hopkins University School of Advanced International Studies in Washington, D.C., from 1990 to 2009. In 2009, he became the first Lenfest Earth Institute Professor of Natural Resource Economics at Columbia University, New York City. Scott has been a visiting scholar at Harvard, Yale, Princeton, at the University Paris, one Pantheon Sorbonne, 
and is now a visiting fellow at the Institute of Advanced Study in Study in Berlin. Previously, he was chairman of the advisory board of the Beijing Institute in the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. His first paper on international environment agreements, written in 1989, but not published until 1994, is still regarded as a seminal paper on the subject. Its surprise, it surprising and provocative conclusion was that the world can adopt the treaty in which all countries participate and behave in their collective interests, but only when these countries would have behaved nearly the same way had they acted only out of self-interest. When countries' behavior needs to change dramatically in order to advance the collective interests, treaties fail to secure much participation. Scott called this the paradox of cooperation. <coughs> Scott's paper earned him the Eric Kempe Prize in 1996, given by the European Association of Environmental Resource Economists. And the publication of Enduring Quality Award in 2016, given by the Association of Environmental Resource Economists, after making many contributions on this topic, Scott wrote his book, his first book, Environment and Statecraft, The Strategy of Environmental Treaty Making, published by Oxford University Press in 2003. This showed that a treaty called the Montreal Protocol, which was adopted to protect the ozone layer, really did support cooperation, but that to achieve the same degree of cooperation, for issues like climate change would be more difficult. Even before finishing this book, Scott became curious about other instances of international cooperation, such as the eradiction of smallpox. Scott wrote a paper offering an explanation for this success, in this case showing that a treaty was not needed because each country would only be willing to act if assured that all other countries were sure to act. This discovery and others provided the material for Scott's second book, Why Cooperate? The Incentive to Supply Global Public Goods, published by Oxford University Press in 2007. Throughout his career, Scott's abiding interest has been with how to make cooperation more effective in the real world and in this capacity, he has advised a number of organizations, including the United Nations, the European Commission, the World Bank, the International Task Force on Global Public Goods. He has also been a lead author of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Personally, I think the most striking feature of Scott is his amazing gift to spot important research questions much earlier than others, and to provide answers which can also be communicated to scholars outside of economics. Even in a rather mathematical discipline, he has managed to publish papers which use simple techniques because people care about his topics and what he has to say. Vice Chancellor, I present to you Professor Scott Barrett <coughs> who is eminently worthy of the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa.
thank you, Vice Chancellor, and thank you, Professor Finnis and Professor uh, Frankel. Uh, this is an extraordinary honor for me. I'm quite moved by this. Of course, Bath is one of Britain's great universities, and as you heard from Michael Finnis, I spent quite a lot of my time here. My children were born here, and I will always feel that Britain is my home. Um, I'm also moved by this honor because uh, Michael, I believe, had proposed me. And, of course, the thing that academics care the most about is what their peers think of them. And Michael is a leader in the same field that I work in, so I was deeply touched when he asked if I would accept this honor. Um, I wanted to say something about the work that Michael mentioned, and the first thing I wanted to say was, where did I get the idea from? I think when you see a body of work, and many people here have produced great works themselves, you wonder, where did the idea come from? On this particular uh, area of work, I can be very specific. It began on September 17, 1987, and that was the morning after an agreement had been reached in Montreal in which countries had vowed to phase down their production and consumption of CFCs in order to protect the planet's ozone layer. This completely surprised me because what I had been taught as a student, and I was doing my PhD at the LSE at the time, was that cooperation at this level would fail. And I asked colleagues and professors at the LLC at the time what they thought of it, and none of these people took it seriously. They didn't think it would amount to much, and I suspected they were wrong. So that's when I started to work on it. What I didn't know at the time is that I'd still be working on it now, <laughs> so it has become an obsession, um, but also a great joy. Uh, at a conference a few years ago, Michael and I were chatting, and he said to me, Scott, it's funny, you write on cooperation, but almost all your work is sole authored. <laughs> what is it about you? Well, it's not true today. I have a co-author, I've written quite a few things with. But I wanted to say that even when your work is sole authored, it doesn't mean that you did it on your own, because none of us does anything, certainly nothing of very great importance on his or her own. And I wanted to mention the people who helped me to produce this work, and I think it's very important for everyone to know that this is how it goes. This is true for young people that you will need and you will receive help, and it's true for those of us who are a little bit more advanced that this is what we do. We pass knowledge and we pass encouragement through the generations. And uh, one person I wanted to thank was, is David Pierce who was a very distinguished professor at University College London, because David supported the idea, but more importantly, he actually provided resources that allowed me more time to do the research. <coughs> David also encouraged me to always focus on the policy aspect of the research, and not just the purely academic. Um, when I had produced the first draft of this first piece of work that Michael mentioned, um, another mentor of mine, Kalior Mailer of the Stockholm School of Economics, said to me, but what about the folk theorem? Now, well, I'm not going to give you a whole lecture about game theory and so on, but basically what he was saying to me was there was something missing in my paper. And he was right. And I then added a section to that paper, but that's where the idea came from. As Michael said, the paper was written in 1989. It was published in 1994. Now, why did it take so long? Well, as you might imagine, the paper was rejected um, at least twice, I think three times. It's a, my memory is, for some reason I'm not trying to remember exactly how many times it was rejected. But I was, uh, I had steeled myself for this because my PhD supervisor, uh, Sir Partha Disgupta, um, had warned me when I was finishing my PhD, which was not on international issues, by the way, but he had warned me that um, I would have trouble getting my work published, not because it wasn't good, but because it was different. And I hope he meant that, but uh, 
I was encouraged by that, and that encouragement has lasted to me until today. Uh, Michael mentioned that my work is very simple. Well, one reason for that is I'm not as mathematically advanced as other people, but also I've learned that uh, simplicity can be very, very powerful. People understand it and they remember it, which is very important. And the person who inspired me here was Tom Schelling. Uh, I didn't know him at first, his work inspired me. Later I came to know him and the inspiration continues. Um, there's one, as I said, uh, at one point I hadn't written very much with other people, Michael has noted this, but in the last few years I've written quite a few papers with Astrid Danenberg. And these papers have been taking advantage of Astrid's great talents, which are in experimental economics. And in this work, you can actually test the ideas that you get from theory. Um, you, you can't do them in the real world because you can't get countries to experiment with ideas you may have, but you can do it in the laboratory. And we've produced a number of papers, and they've been um, the most fun work I've ever done and they have both uh, told us things that we didn't know before, um, showing whether the theory was valuable or not, but also uh, they showed us things that the theory could not show at all. So to sum up, I'm deeply grateful for this honor. I have always been inspired by the real world, but I've been nurtured and encouraged and helped by many other people, and I'm grateful to them all. Thank you all very much. this ceremony closed for the conferment of degrees. Would you mind standing?